Powerful. We tried to recruit faith leaders that had some experience public speaking. It's really, really impressive. And just the, the values that Allison has brought for years to this work uh, is a hugely, hugely important bill. And this, like so many bills, are important not just for Oregon, but for people across this country. When Oregon passes legislation that shows that we care about each other, other states find the courage of the same. So on so many of these bills, this work is really, really important beyond our borders. So one final bill before we head downstairs for lunch. House Bill 2957, really related to what Allison was speaking about. That while we as people of faith refuse to divide people into groups, our, our laws do. And then as long as that's the case, we need to work as hard as possible to ensure that in, the, in our immigrant and refugee communities that all those who are eligible for services and support once they obtain status do indeed have access to services that can help them obtain that status. We know that in Oregon and across the country, one out of every three individuals who lack status actually is eligible for an immigration status, but for a lack of resources or lack of knowledge about their eligibility, doesn't seek that out or doesn't, can't obtain it. House Bill 2957 seeks to, to change that. And to speak about this bill, please welcome uh, Veronica Nunez, Director of Leadership and Advocacy at Adelante Mujeres. And Nasia Castaneda, uh, our dear colleague, community organizer at EMO. Hola, buenas tardes, good afternoon, or morning still, right? I'm already thinking ahead of myself. Uh, I'm Nasia Castaneda uh, with the Communical Ministries of Oregon, and my colleague Veronica is, and I are going to talk to you about the importance of HB 2957, which provides um, to those eligible Oregonians uh, to stabilize their immigration status and start down up towards a pathway to residency, permanent residency. So this would allow all those immigrants um, that have maybe an eligibility that they're not even aware of, like Britt said, um, to apply for that process with USCIS with, uh, with the help of an attorney because we want to make sure that these people get the help they need uh, from uh, uh, the correct person, right? We don't, have, we don't want them to go to notarios uh, who a lot of times have um, go through fraud, you know, they lose their documents or end up paying more. So the importance of HB 2957 would allow uh, many people with the possibility that have advanced parole to be able to uh, apply for uh, residency. Uh, many of them are eligible or have been a victim of a crime that would also make them eligible uh, to obtain a permanent status. There are many, many different ways that this could happen. So having a consultation by an immigration attorney or a creditor representative would allow um, this to be, um, to be done for, for these people to obtain a legal status. <sighs> I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> and, um, so um, I just want to share briefly a story from one of our clients, you know, working at SOAR Immigration Legal Services. Every day I saw people coming in, many of them, um, wanting to ask for a consultation but couldn't afford it. Um, I don't know if you know, but at SOAR Legal Immigration Services, the consultation is $50. So imagine for somebody that doesn't have those $50, how hard, how stressful um, it is for them to not know if they're eligible for something because they don't have those $50. So this bill would provide that funding for that person to get the, the consultation and have uh, through information of their, their eligibility um, so, you know, challenges that these people are facing is that they don't have the work authorization to be able to work and provide or earn that money that they need to provide for, to cover the attorney fees and the USCIS fees, which are very expensive to apply for, um, 
a family petition, it can be, you know, in the private sector, thousands and thousands of dollars. So many people are trying to, you know, have earned the money that they need to provide the expensive housing that we already know about, uh, provide for their family. And so it is very difficult. I'll pass it on to uh, Veronica and she'll share a little bit more mm -hmm. too. Hello everyone, buenos dias. My name is Veronica Nunez. I am the Director of Leadership and Advocacy at Adelante Mujeres, a nonprofit that is based in Forest Grove, Oregon. I came to Oregon in the year 2000. I uh, came from Venezuela, that's where my family is from. And what I came to share is uh, why this bill 2957 is so important for me and how I have seen that when resources are well used and when people have the right mentorship and the right access to legal services, they can thrive here. And by that, they, they thrive and their families thrive, our communities thrive. I have three special stories. One is my friend um, Carlos, who immigrated almost 14 years to the state. He's eligible to uh, for uh, apply uh, to the citizenship, but hasn't been able to save enough money. He hasn't seen his mom for 14 years since he left Venezuela, and. Um, Part of the reason is because he has to send them, he's an only child who sends money to his family every month. So one of the struggles of, of, of immigrants, especially I know from, from Venezuela, is that sometimes when, when we come, we have to still send money to our families. And that's a barrier sometimes to save thousands and thousands of dollars that sometimes these processes can cost. I also have my friend Bibi, for, who is from Argentina, now a U.S. citizen. She, um, she was in a, in a case of domestic violence, and she thought that she couldn't leave her husband because of, you know, like many reasons, like fear. Her husband would tell her that she couldn't leave or she would be deported. She um, actually found uh, support through Catholic charities, and that was her path to citizenship. She didn't know there was one person that held her hand and actually brought her to the right services, and now she, she and her kids are citizens of this country and living their dream of actually um, being able, you know, to, to, to buy a home, to afford education and so many other things. And then there is my friend, good friend Mario, who also uh, didn't know the connections that he needed to have, the resources, and just last summer talked to me like after I met Nasia, and Nasia told me about SOAR and the resources, and he was still, he was eligible, but they didn't have the money he was saving. And he last, uh, two weeks ago, he presented his citizenship exam and is on his way to be a citizen of the United States. So I do believe that by having the resources, so many people can benefit. And I want people to see also that when one person thrives, when one person is doing well, that has an impact in our communities. We cannot feel detached from the stories that happen because when, when people are in trouble, that uh, has an impact, but when people are doing well, it also has an impact in the way we can invest these resources back into the communities instead of maybe giving it to false uh, people that are advertising something, or instead of you know putting money in this process, they can put it into the places, into the education, into the economy, into community. So I do believe that this bill can help us all to have a better life here in the states. That's yes, on HB 57, 2957. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.